Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be covering Dropbox. This is a growing cloud-based company that helps its customers store all files, videos, pictures. It helps many small businesses really manage all the content that their businesses need to store. It's an interesting company. It's a small, mid-sized company that I think has a, a good future, and the stock price has been moving up in 2023. I'm going to take a look at the company, take it through my investing process, and make a decision whether I want to buy, hold, or sell. Do me a favor and like my video and subscribe to my channel, and please leave a comment on Dropbox. I'm going to evaluate Dropbox to see if it's a good investment, and I'm going to look at three principal areas. First is the company, the management team, and the industry. Do I want to buy into all three? Next is the balance sheet. Does it have low debt and less than three times EBITDA? Last is the discount on the stock. I'm a value investor, and I want a discount on the stock. That way, I could see my investment go up in value. And based on the answers that I get from those areas, I'm going to buy, hold, or sell a Dropbox. Dropbox was founded when cloud had already come out and they were born in the cloud and help individuals store all their documents, whether you're a creative person that needs to store a lot of pictures and videos or your business that wants its employees to collaborate, work on projects together and so forth. It's a good company. They've worked with other partners like Salesforce and Adobe to integrate Dropbox into those solutions so that a user could be in Salesforce and store a lot of content on Dropbox or Adobe or other platforms that Dropbox has integrated to. They have many users, over 700 million registered users around the world, 18.1 million are paying users, and they store more than 800 billion pieces of content, which is incredible. Dropbox was founded in the cloud era, so they grew organically by just being a really easy to use way to store your, your files, your content, and then those users took their, their, their uh, preferences to the companies they worked at. A lot of companies started to buy into Dropbox. And maybe there was a couple of users within a company and then Dropbox expands and, and tries to sell the entire business more of an enterprise arrangement to have them store all their documents. So a really natural growth rate for a cloud company and Dropbox is growing. They're really using this strategy effectively. Dropbox is growing their annual renewable revenue nicely. It's an upward trend. It's not a crazy growth rate, but it's going in the right direction, which is very good. The number of paying users has gone up very nicely. And then the average revenue per user has also gone up. So the metrics look good for Dropbox across the board on revenue growth, revenue stability. The company's long-term targets look pretty impressive and I think are aspirational. Having gross margin of 80 to 82% would be phenomenal. We'll see if they get there. Margins of 30 to 32% would be very good. But the, the number that I really pay attention to is free cash flow. And they aspire to have $964 million of free cash flow by 2024. I don't see the line to get there, but it's good to know that they're aspiring to really be a high free cash flow generating company, which is very good in my book. Dropbox has been profitable for some time. Very good to see that they have hit a really good profitable era to their company. I'm going to be using the next four quarters of profits, which look good. And I'm going to be taking all those earnings per share and using a PE that is going to be higher than the PE that they're selling at because it is a cloud company. They're growing. I think they're a really good acquisition target. So I'm going to go with a higher PE as opposed to the one that is uh, they're currently trading on. I think that Dropbox stock is being discounted by 34%. I think each share is worth $39.56, but the stock market's selling the, the stock for $29.62. I come up with my valuation by looking at free cash flows and earnings per share. Let's take a look at free cash flows first. I'm going to take the 2023 year-to-date number and annualize it and use that as my starting point. The company is aspirational. They're, they're trying to get to the high 900 millions in free cash flow, but... Uh, I'm going to use a more conservative number. I'm going to grow cash flows by 8%, starting with 759 million and grow those cash flows in the first four years by 8%. Terminal value, which is all cash flows after year four, is 17.9 billion. And I have a growth rate of 3% on that. Historically, they've had very high growth rate, 25% on free cash flow and then revenue at 12%. But as they get bigger, those growth rates become harder and harder to match or exceed. 
the growth rates will constantly get smaller because the numbers that are being calculated get much bigger. I'm going to use a discount rate of 8.5 because they have a very good balance sheet and deserve a lower weighted average cost of capital. The intrinsic value, the net present value of all those cash flows discounted by 8.5% is $14.6 billion. I'm going to add the cash on the balance sheet and take away the debt, and we get to $14.6 billion of equity value in the company. The market cap currently is $10.2 billion. And I calculate a per share value based on free cash flows of $42.47, but the market will sell you shares at $29.62. So based on cash flow, the stock's discounted by 43%. Looking at earnings per share, I'm going to use a PE of 20. I think they're growing, good company in the right space, cloud technology, and I think they're a good acquisition target. I'm going to grow earnings per share by 4%, and I'm going to value based on earnings per share. Uh, all the earnings per share that I expect in the future and come up with a value based on earnings per share of $33.76. Stock market selling stock at $29.62. So there's a 14% discount if we look at the earnings per share method. I believe in free cash flow method more than earnings per share. So I'm going to use a two thirds weight on my blend and one third weight of earnings per share to get to a blended discount of 34% on Dropbox. The balance sheet's in great shape because they have almost as much cash as they do debt. So they have net debt of close to zero and they produce really good EBITDA. So I'm not worried about the balance sheet. It's in excellent shape. The ratio is almost, almost zero and I'm looking for less than three. Looking at where Dropbox has been trading, it really shows that there was a great opportunity to buy Dropbox uh, in the March, April, May timeframe and you would have ridden that stock up significantly. It's up 30.6% year to date. But I think if you go from the low point to the high point, you're more of a 50% gainer if you bought shares at that point. So the company is got momentum and I think they have uh, more to go based on the value that I have. And there's a difference between the current stock price and where I'm valuing the company. So should I invest my hard-earned money in Dropbox or just walk away? Let's take a look. So starting with the company, what do I think of the company? I think the company's terrific. I really like companies that have focus, especially in technology. And Dropbox is trying to be the best company they can be for all of the, the, the file storage, collaboration, all those things they do very well. So I like that about them. The management team's good in the industry I really like. Debt is almost zero, so it's very low. And the balance sheet has less than three times, debt is less than three times EBITDA on the balance sheet. And there's a good discount on the stock. I am going to look for pullback days and buy shares of Dropbox. Thank you for watching the video on Dropbox. I really appreciate it. Do me a favor and leave a comment on Dropbox. I'd love to hear what you think of the company. Also, please subscribe to my channel and like my video. Thanks again for watching.